So this should be Le'ilui Nishmat, uh, my late father, Gedalia Moreno ben Matilda, a soul rest in heaven, amen. amen. So last week we read the Parashat Re'e. It's a very interesting parasha, like any other parasha that is interesting. I never found a parasha that wasn't interesting. Um, and you could almost like you see a certain theme throughout the Sefer, Sefer Dvarim, almost like Bereshit, two parashiot, two parashiot, two parashiot, more or less. And that parasha is really connected to Parashat Ekev in a certain extent. And it says, I give you bracha and klala. So it's very good. I have, without getting into the issue of free choice and they'll leave it for some other time, uh, I'm giving you bracha and klala. So everybody knows what bracha is, right? Bracha is, what's bracha? Blessing. Blessing, I'll give you a blessing. And if I'll tell you, I'll give you a bracha right away, you see the cha-ching machine, you know, like this, pockets full of money, you know, uh, pink champagne, tailored suits, uh, right? Bracha. Fancy cars, eating donuts, eclairs, right, Mike? That's bracha. And then what's klala? Klala means a curse, you know, like patsua and you bliss with no money and uh, you... Right? That's klala, right? All right, I'll tell you it's not klala. That's not what klala is, and you got absolutely wrong what bracha is. That's why people are very unhappy, because they don't realize what's bracha and what's klala. Bracha means a blessing, klala means a curse. You don't know what it means. So there's something that I want to tell you to take this, this opportunity. I would really like to encourage you to buy the perush of Rav Hirsch. It goes in, in five volumes, right? Rav Shimshon Hirsch. His perush on the Torah is, is a mamash begeda pokea chivrim. It's unbelievable. Uh, it was translated very beautifully in, you know, from German. It was just very good. And I would recommend you guys to read it because it, he just writes beautifully. So he writes something very interesting. He writes that, let's look what klala is, because it's not what most people think. Klala, how do you write klala? Right? You write klala like this. Kuf, lamed, lamed, hey, right? Klala, hey. Now, if we're going to take this, and you see the word klala, klala. you don't need to zoom in. It's okay, everybody sees it. Whoever doesn't see it, doesn't see it. Klala. So, first of all, we show kal. To be very light. To be very light means that there's no substance in you to your life. Life without substance is a curse. And if you look at further, it says, Kal, let's write it here. Kal, le Hashem. Light to Hashem. In other words, Ezra, she wrote in Parashat Ekev. Parashat Ekev, he says, Rashi, the first Rashi there says what? Mitzvot asher atem dashim be'akevchem. There's a light mitzvot that you kind of, you know, kick your way around. Ah, it's not sarich it's To write a Sefer Torah, oh, big mitzvah, right? right? To help your friend, eh, somebody else help him. Light mitzvah. Mitzvot asher atem dashim beraglechem be'akevchem in your in your heels. You kind of kick it with your, with your heels. Mitzvot that are light in your head. Not understanding. What's the, what's the purpose of my mitzvah? What am I doing? What am I doing? There's no substance in what I'm doing. In other words, there's no meaning in what I do. I do mitzvot because I do it. HaKadosh Baruch Hu does not, I uh, try not to get into Bechirah Chopshit, but HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't want you to do things because you need to do them. HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants you to choose things. When you choose, you understand this is the way, one way to do things, this is another way, you can see it. It says, don't worship idols. Understand, there is such thing as idols. There is such thing as bad in the world. Don't say that there is no bad in the world. There is. And I recognize what the bad is, but I choose the good. 
through the choosing. And that will be through anything in life. You have an internet. Is the internet good or bad? The internet is nothing. Not good, not bad. Depend how you choose to use it. Is uh, sex good or bad? This is nothing. It's not good, not bad. Depends how you choose to use it. And so is everything else that is so-called bad in the world. Bad to the bone. It's only bad because that's an aspect in which you chose to reveal in that thing. The only good thing is the Torah. There's no aspect in the Torah that could be bad. Only aspects in which you megale panim Torah, which you reveal in quote unquote new things in the Torah, but that's not the Torah, that's already something else, because the Torah is emet, it's truth, it's good, anything you divert from it, it's not it. It's similar, but not it. So what is the essence of klala, curse, life with no substance, no meaning? What does it mean? Look, I didn't say anything about money. I didn't say anything about looking good, about having wealth or having, you know, being healthy or have a six pack or have an eight pack or having a keg to that matter. It doesn't make a difference. But how is there a substance? What does it mean? You go to the market. You go with the baskets are heavy. Salim meleim bracha. What do you mean, bracha? You, I'm, I'm, for all you know, I might buy the, I don't know, meat and whatever. It's bad for me. No, it's not bad for me. It's the bracha. It's the real substance. But if you go to the market, you come with empty bags. That's a curse. So is to your life. What are the bags of your life that you carry yourself with? Are the actions that you do throughout your life, do they have a meaning? Do your actions have substance? If your actions have substance to them, there's a meaning you understand. And this is the path in which I chose to, knowing what's this and this and this, and I chose that. Then there is bracha in your love. That's a bracha because you're happy. You're not struggling with this. But if I would choose to you, for example, I'll choose to Sam. Sam, I want you to become a, I don't know what, carpenter. I told him what to do. He didn't choose it. That will be a curse for him. There's no substance to it. It doesn't mean anything to him. That's why you should teach your children to be able to choose. Allow your children to choose. I mean, if it's good for Kadosh Baruch Hu, we should choose. We should do it ourselves. So the whole concept of Baruch and Klala, we got it all wrong. We got it completely wrong. So you, let's say, for example, if you have a Rolex, or what's it, Breitling, or Vacherol Constantine, and let's say somebody else has a Timex, which one is Bracha? Which one has more Bracha? Whoever sees that it's a Bracha, there's substance in it. Why? What do I mean? Because Chazal tells us the other way around. So if let's say I have a watch that costs $25,000, that's a curse because guess what? I'm never going to be able to wear it. I will always have to you know, hide it like this. I'm never going to in the subway. I have to worry about it. So that's a curse, this watch. I have a time. It's all right, you know, no, no problem, $5, $10. So you got it all wrong. Bracha is not in, in value. It's more in attitude. To see what you have. So, Hashem is a yofi. There is a meaning of what I'm going there. There is a substance to what I do. And most of us live life with no substance, with no meaning. That's why life becomes a curse. We hate it. And that's why we can't love Hashem. It's very difficult for us because we don't feel like we choose that. We're being told to. And that, that's not, not the way it worked. When HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave us the Torah, we said, Na'asev and Nishma. You choose us and we chose you. As much as you choose us, we choose you. 
You're going to be our God and we're going to be your people. It's the same thing. If, if, if I'm going to tell you, uh, Yeshua, you must marry this girl. Okay, that's Zalman. But that's a, you must marry this girl. No, okay. What are the chances of him to actually love that woman? Very, very slim. But if he chose this girl, based on substance, Rabbi not on looks, not on money, on substance, you might not think she's pretty. And she actually might not be pretty. But he chose her. That's his. Therefore, there's a great chance for love. And so is in Avodat Hashem. So I would challenge you to really change your whole outlook on what you refer to as a bracha and klala. When somebody gives you a bracha, don't right away go and fill up the lottery. Immediately take a, 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 an inventory of all the things you have and see the blessing that your Kadosh Baruch actually gave you in fulfilling and meaning in your life and so on. And if you have no meaning in life, let me tell you, go right away. And you can, I don't think you can get it on Amazon. But go right away, right away. Go and seek some truthful meaning and substance in your life. Question everything that you do. Talking about Amazon, I think there's Amazon, how do you call this? Smile? Yeah, if you buy stuff on Amazon, if you go to Amazon Smile, you put the yeshiva, we actually get... We get uh, some uh, some money back from Amazon to the yeshiva, so don't forget that. And if you have any questions, you can reach us at Rabbi Gaon at yeshiva. That no, Rabbi Gaon at Gmail, and our website is yeshivaetzion.com, and we would love to hear from you. And also, if you can, we would like to uh, uh, encourage you to give us some donation. Well, hopefully, one day we'll be able to buy a building of our own. There will be a Merkaz Torah. So you can take a part of this endeavor that will be on our website on the PayPal account over there. Have a great day.